It's the Family Show on your number one station, RX Radio, hoping you are keeping well and maintaining the peace. By peace, I mean, uh, you know, you're not getting into fights with people like in bars. Do you remember this case from 2015 in which a brawl ensued between two gentlemen, I guess not so gentle gentlemen, eh? two thugs who were squabbling over some woman and uh, one decided to take it upon himself to attack the other and I think a broken bottle got involved mm-hmm. and uh, the person died as a result. Uh, I remember that story. This happened in uh, Governor back in 2015. Well, anyway, the Court of Appeal in Kampala has set free Ivan Ch- Kamucha Kamuka. Kamuka. <laughs> after overturning his uh, three-year jail sentence over the death of John Ahim Bisibwe, a.k.a. Joni, during a club uh, governor brawl that took place in 2015. So a panel of three justices, including Elizabeth Musoke, Eva Luswata, and Christopher Gashirabake, reasoned with uh, Kamu- Ka- Kamuka. Yes. Is that how you say it? Kamuka. <laughs> Kamuka. Kamukas. Oh, God. Kam- Kamuka. <laughs> that... Uh, he didn't intend to kill Johnny, but rather fought back after being attacked by the deceased. And uh, I, I don't remember the specific details, but so the person who died was the guy who attacked first. Yes. So what happened was that um, um, this guy that has been set free, he's called Ivan. Mm-hmm. Ivan is married to Johnny, the deceased, his ex girlfriend ex-wife actually so they meet in club and uh, he tries he attacks them without provocation Mm -hmm. and when he does that he actually threw a glass at them and then it shattered and this guy picked a piece of glass and Mm. stabbed him and he bled to death well i'm not sure that qualifies as self-defense well according to these justices they said that he was actually defending himself. There was no premeditation. I understand, but I, I'm saying, I'm saying. So the guy uh, threw the gl- uh, the bottle. The, a glass. At a him glass. And it was it a glass. Him, yes. Okay, so the glass breaks. So this guy turns around, picks up a broken shard or, yes. or piece of glass. Yes. And he proceeds to stab this guy with it. Yes. I mean, was there any further scuffle after the initial? No, after he's. Stabbed uh, after he stabbed him, this guy started bleeding profusely. Mean, apparently- I'm asking so between the time the guy threw the glass mm. and the glass breaking, mm-hmm. and then the guy picking up the piece of glass to stab him, mm. was there a further scuffle? Uh, because here's what I'm picturing right? Mm-hmm. It's one thing to chuck a glass at someone, it shatters, and then you turn around and you're like, dude, you know, what the F are you doing? and then you walk away. <laughs> Or did he throw the glass at the guy, it shattered, and then he then proceeded to try to... No, there was a fight. There were blows. Okay, so they exchanged. started fighting. Exactly. And you know when people are under the influence of alcohol. So I think in that in the instance of like throwing a punch and the other one returning the punch, he picked a glass, threw it at him, he, he missed it, but then it broke, gets a shard, and then stabs this guy. Unfortunately for him, the guy started bleeding profusely and uh, he was rushed to Case Hospital but he was pro- pronounced dead on arrival. All right, so uh, he's been in jail for three years? So he was sentenced to three years and a half in jail, but then in 2009, he was given bail because he 2009? was... 2009? Uh, rather, 2019, because okay. the case happened in 2015, mm-hmm. and then he was sentenced to three and a half years in jail. Uh, the case was manslaughter. They changed it from murder because there was no premeditation and, you know, those legal things. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he was then given bail in 2019 because him and his lawyer had appealed the case. Okay. So now the Court of Appeal has overturned the sentence. So he's a free man. Uh, is his wife still around? I mean, uh, that's the that's the part I don't know. But I have did a she feeling did, has she been waiting together. for him? Has she been waiting for him to be released? But because she, is, but it will she has, be he has a, been out of jail since 2019. So probably he's you know still here. Wait, wait, you're saying he's been out of jail since 2019? That's when he got bail. So the case has been in the Court of Appeal. Had the Court ah. of Appeal agreed with okay, the okay. trial so he's judge, been, he's... he would be going to jail. All right. Okay, so he wasn't being held in remand. He wasn't in prison. No. This, at least not since 2019. No. Okay, okay. okay. I understand that. that <laughs> and makes then it, 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 the drama actually is more. So the ex-husband that was killed actually had a son with the wife. Oh. So it's it, it's a case of your current husband killing the father of your child. 
Woo! I well, know, it's sticky. <laughs> well, some might say this is an argument against uh, marrying single mothers because they they come with baby daddy baggage. How do how did we end here because <laughs> men are always marrying young women when they have baby mama baggage. My point is because uh, it, when you have a child with someone Typically, there will always be some kind of attachment. And depending on how you ca- handle the co-parenting, it, it can either aggravate the already negative feelings mm-hmm. so that there's probably some bitterness or hatred towards the other person so that he b- then became so easily triggered upon seeing her with a new with man, the new man. At, uh, at, at the club uh, leading to this violent uh, altercation. For me, so now, mm-hmm. for the guy who found himself being arrested for the murder of this guy mm. i'm wondering if he ever took a moment to ask himself but you know what maybe my mistake was in dealing with a woman who already has a baby daddy because that's one thing people like to talk about one of the biggest headaches of dating single moms is the baby daddy it's not always easy to get him out of the picture either she still loves him and wants him back or he loves her and is giving you grief and uh, the shoe fits pretty much the other side because even us women are wary of we men that have children because there is always baby mama drama where she's calling him at a given time saying the child is sick when the child is actually not sick trying to take him to court that she's not getting enough money even if he's actually sending her money so Honestly, if you're to review the whole situation, it can be sticky on both sides. So what would you advise that people just either date or get married to childless people? No, it's safer. actually, for me, the advice would be that if your person has moved on, because this guy that died had already moved on. He had two children with another woman. So why so do you attack, attack this attack dude? your woman's, uh, your ex-wife's? new partner because he's do you think you own them because he still by the way just because you get another woman doesn't mean you don't still love the first so if you love me you must ruin my life many of us what? are still carrying with us oh, the shattered God. pieces of what used to be our hearts i think that is men being <laughs> entitled to everything so, like the world owes them So just because we get some other lady get married start families it doesn't mean we still don't think about the uh, the one true love. No, it's not one true love. It's and, people, and I guess women do that it's too. It's people being entitled to other people. Like, if I can't have you, I'm going to ruin your my life. Friend, you think, matters, with you my think life? matters of the heart are it's for discussion? It's not matters of the heart. If you love, you love. No, there is nothing like... Can you stop like, yourself from loving someone? There is nothing like once in a lifetime kind of love. You moved on. You had two more kids with another woman. Ooh. So why are you ruining another person's life? By the way, it's a very painful thing, you... Go out there and you meet your ex who you had so much love for. And there she is seemingly very happy with a, a new man. And you start thinking about all the weird, strange ways of sex that they might be having. And? In all the ways that she used to do with you. And, and you just get filled up with rage and anger. But you see that it, that and is actually And a wire in your sick. brain snaps leading to But you see that is being like sick. This. That is actually a mental illness. No, it's if not. It's normal. If you're going to see someone that moved on from you, I know, you can feel feelings of like, hurt, I love this person, I miss this person, but you snapping and going as far as beating the other person. Now, that's where I draw the, the line and say, you're sick, you need help. Love is not for the faint of heart, as uh, has been famously stated many, many times. So uh, if you're looking to get into this love situation, you better learn how to manage your heart. Because if not, then uh, you're going to end up in situations like this. It's not the heart you need like to this. manage. You need to learn to manage your emotions. You're a grown-up man. You're a grown-up woman. You don't have to go around causing havoc, wreaking havoc on but people's lives. But can I also just say... Because what? You were charged. And, and, and this is why... Uh, and, I have not discussed this enough. I think we should do like a whole series on it. How to handle breakup. Yep. Breakup breakups are inevitable. Yes. You know, as in it ha- if it happens, it happens. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's not meant to be. You part ways. Uh, but there's not been much of a discussion of how you might want to break up with someone. And I think I've mentioned to you before, when uh, I break up with someone and I know that they had very, very strong feelings for me, I do. I I come away with a feeling of responsibility for this person's well-being. Like I don't just go away and say, "Oh well, to hell, let her go live her life the way she wishes." It's not my business. It's like, yo, if someone loved you, that was 
uh, something beautiful that they did for you, I don't think you should treat it trivially. And if they require uh, some sort of a healing process, mm-hmm. I, I think you should be available for that because uh, po- sh- co- co- conventional wisdom has it that, oh, if it's over, it's over, cut communication, cut ties, just don't deal with them. I disagree. But sometimes it's what you need. Like, don't ignore them when they reach out and say hi. You can say hi back. But do you really need the person that broke your heart, the person that left you or dumped you to be the person that also helps you about that heartbreak, get over that heartbreak? Isn't you, it like salt <laughs> added to an me. injury? So if your ex calls you and says, I'm standing on top of this building, I'm getting ready to jump. Of I going to say okay it's not my business no, don't call me again that is an extreme <laughs> circumstance you'll try to talk them down calm them down try to see that they change their mind but i'm saying if cuz you know breakups happen you start or you go through the five are they five phases of grief stages of grief yes right. so you may have you will go through denial then there will be pain there will be acceptance you know so do you need when you're still in denial to be blowing up your ex's phone trying to be but what did you do and they're telling you the same thing it's not you it is me <laughs> but be sympathetic because i think there's ways because i think you know the uh, people have dumped me actually mostly i'm the one that gets dumped or ghosted but uh depending on how they handle it you can come away feeling not so negative about the person that you, you may even end up being friends Right? I know, yeah, but you don't, not many people are s- mature about because, things. Because I think if in this situation, uh, this lady, uh, if between this lady and that dude, they had worked things out properly, mm. uh, I think uh, this violence would not have ensued. And given his reaction to seeing them in the bar, chances are she's the one that broke it off. Well, I really don't know. They were married. They lived together in, uh, in Sweden. Then I think she came back here because the guy who stabbed the other to death lives here. Mm. So probably she came back here, got with uh, Ivan, and then this guy also came back home and found them in club. But for me, I still insist we need to learn to handle our emotions. We are not entitled to the people we love. Yes, we may love them, but if they don't want us anymore, we need to accept I that. understand that, but at the same time, can we at the same time be cognizant of our responsibility to some extent, not fully, but to some extent uh, the well, for the well-being of the person that uh, you are no longer with? Because you claim to have once loved this person. So are you, are you going to be okay watching but, them but suffer? But do you see the catch-22 here? Because now I have moved on. I'm in a relationship with another man. And me keeping in constant communication with my ex, even if he's the father of my child, it's going to, you know, leave a sour taste in his mouth. And you two, you got married. He had two children. So you see how that is hard. Like, it's hard to balance. For me, if actually, if so if I have a woman and she says to me, Oh, by the way, there's this dude, you know how my phone keeps ringing every night and I don't answer? Yeah, that's my ex and it's like he can't get over me. He's stalking me. I don't know what to do. I would say to her, meet with him and talk to him uh, and uh, just help him, like, help him come out of that painful you place. You who said that if your woman received flowers, you would feel a certain type of way. You're going to let your wife go meet her ex and what? Help him with his grief. You see, this isn't about whether or not you will feel upset or suspicious. This is, a, this is for your safety. Because I don't want to be out and about with you in a restaurant or in a bar and, and be, be accosted <laughs> by some dude who feels hurt by what you did to him. Yeah. I don't want to be looking over my shoulder wondering if today is the day I'm going to get killed by an angry ex-boyfriend. But so. you know, sometimes I, 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 I also think that uh, maybe this ex-wife didn't even know that that guy could be, could go to the extent of attacking them in public. Sometimes ah, people are going to shock you. She knew and she must have told him, yeah, F you. What are you going to do? You're no. such a you useless you man. People that have murdered, let's say their wives, their children or their husbands and everyone is like, this is not the person we knew. They never had attributes of someone who could do anything like this. All right. People do things when they are in rage and people well, do s- things when they are emotional. Well, I'm still in favor of having a wider conversation about how to handle breakups. And I think it's mostly target it will be mostly targeted at ladies since they initiate the most breakups. Oh, how about the men that ghost us? 
guys just stop communicating. They leave you to figure it out. So why so don't you, you call? You, you think you dumped him. No, you call him. He says, he can even pick and say, I'm busy, let me call you back. But he never calls back. You text him, he blue ticks you. You know you girls have this issue. And he gives you the you, one-liners. You, 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 so he leaves you to read between the lines and I, choose how it, you go the, forward. The thing is, and and this is why this series is going to be very important, it is so easy to reverse that kind of a situation. If you're dealing with a guy and he starts acting like that, it is so easy to turn it around. See, the problem is, usually you feel hurt because you wish he would chase you or pursue you in the, in the way that you want. And yet in, in that instance, if you instead say, Hey, what are you doing Friday? I'm coming over with food and plenty of energy for sex. Are you down? No man will say no. Oh, come on. Even a guy who ghosted you will be like, okay. So if I'm not <laughs> cooking for you and if I'm not uh, saying let's have sex, because you see, some people will avoid talking about the deeper re- uh, issues in a relationship by having sex. You're trying to talk to him about something that is ba- that is actually no, affecting the interna- entire what do you relationship. Want to talk about? And he is trying There's to make love to, to you. No. What there do you want to talk about? times when the relationship has issues, when both of you have issues See, that you need to this, talk about. This is why. This is why the relationships are not this about is why sex the go- alone or this is eating w- food or cooking it. You see, this is why the ghosting happens, and so he will see your f- his phone ringing with your name on it, and he's like, "Oh gosh, now she's going to start." Uh, Let me tell you something, fat boy, and, and I'm not pretending me. to be a man, but if a man really wants a woman, he can do anything. He that's but you see you're proving my point. That is the attitude that causes women to when they sense distance growing between her and the the person of her affection, instead of being proactive, they just sit and say, "Well, if he loves me, he should call me. I'm not going to no, call him." No, but I I already started and then when by he does saying, it, "What do you do?" by asking you, "What do you do?" If I told you. You call a guy. Listen, you call a guy and he says I'm busy or he doesn't pick, he doesn't return calls. And you don't also want to be like a stalker or over overly like nagging, calling him every other minute. So you call and you're like, maybe he's busy. Call, you see, uh, change the tone. Don't call demanding, call offering. And I think this is the biggest. And by the way, this is also true for guys who may want, let's say, their ex-girlfriends back is that a lot of times and you know i've been there where you know you missed uh, the girl and you want to be with her again and so you're calling her and like guilt tripping her telling her how you're suffering without her and all that does is it just makes the person not want to deal with you any further you're putting a burden on them but if instead you're like hey uh can i uh take you for dinner can i buy you uh, something can you you they will usually be more receptive you know, and you can start slowly from there and there'd be a higher chance of you guys reconciling than when you're calling her, complaining, how could you do this to me? Do you don't even care about me? No, and I'm saying this is the, about- this is this is the tone of phone call that a guy gets oh. from girls. Can and I that speak makes as him a go woman that because- makes him go, you know what, I can't deal with no, this. No, I can't speak as a woman because not every time personally I've been ghosted, I've been complaining. There are times when I'm just trying to have a conversation but but probably you've lost interest and you no longer entertain me. I realize that for someone who used to take the time to chat with me, mm-hmm. they're no longer chatting with me. They are giving me one-liners. They are taking hours to respond to my messages. So if I see that and I realize that you're also not calling me, I decide to give you your space. <laughs> How is that? So you want me to start pushing and chasing you it's, when no, you no, have no. showed me all the signs that you're no longer I'm asking, interested? I'm suggesting to you to do the bare minimum. Which is the bare minimum? That, oh, I it, sent a message and you haven't replied within 30 minutes. Okay, I also want to text you again. It's not about 30 minutes. Please don't trivial, uh, trivialize or even an hour. what Listen. I'm saying. Because I'm a grown woman and I can understand when a man is actually trying to to give Men me the long shot. So you see, you're complicating this. Men it's are so easy. And if women were to take my advice, they would get back with whichever guy Why they is wanted. Why that you can't listen to what the women are saying? We're hearing what you're saying, and I'm advising you but that it won't work. To I'm advising you that it's the wrong strategy. Mm-hmm. In the same way that I, I would say also to a man that if you want your ex back, you don't. You don't act needy. And that is what you are doing if you're sort of just standing there saying, well, if she doesn't call me, uh, then then But when I try to call him over and over or suggest debts and I say, can we go out on a date? I'm paying. And you still say no. That's a lie. I'm becoming needy. So you want the women to become needy so that the guys feel macho? 
and I don't know how Why many did you times it? I don't know how many times I have to drum drum this in in t- I'd like to mention this, but really all men need nothing fancy food sex silence period and maybe alcohol so, and you're you're set so probably some of us have been dating men that are send what, a text so of, obese they don't see the need <laughs> of food because let's if you be, talk about food it's like they've not been eating oh my gosh okay let, let me give you a sample text that you can send a guy let's say you're, you're feeling like he's starting to ghost you he's not giving you the attention you want send a text that says this hey darling i miss you I'm feeling super horny today. How about I swing by, cook you a meal, and give you the best sex you've ever had, and uh, I'll leave thereafter. So, one hundred percent of men so will say what you're saying. Please come. Is that <laughs> a guy should ignore me for like a week or two, and then for me to get back into his good graces, I offer sex and food. Yeah. So what happens after that? Because some of them will say, "Okay, fine, come by," and after you leave. He will still you go keep, back to ghosting. No, you. no, no. So, so what, what do you, you do, do? Listen. So what you do is you do that, but you do it uh, a couple of times, and then you stop. Trust me, the guy will, uh, having enjoyed your presence and your company and your intimacy, he'll start to miss you and be like, you know what? I like what this girl is offering me. If I don't step up, I might lose her. You have to be strategic, Olive. Mm-hmm. So you, you give him the goods in the best way possible. Leave him wanting more and be patient. If he decides to take two or three days to respond, guess what? He will get his act together and he will be back to being the sweet uh, romantic boyfriend that well, you love. Well, maybe some people will follow your advice. They should. I'm sure won't because <laughs> it's... BS. Because it's because because work. because if you just sit there proud like uh, he, he's not, not calling proud. me, it's reading then. the situation. It is reading. The, it's like you a guy calling a guy a girl all the time, sending her gifts, offering to take her out on dates, and she keeps ignoring you. You have every right to let her be, to move on. Try the other The thing options. is that's that's what I'm saying. It's 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 not what you do. It's how you do it. So if I'm uh, texting a girl and I'm just texting her, hey, how are you? What are you doing? I miss you. And I don't get a response back. Okay. I might say to myself, well, she doesn't care, so let me just uh, give her space. But instead, if I was texting her, and there's a video of, uh, I had a conversation about this with Viola, and I even put it, it's even on TikTok, one of uh, our, you know, highly viewed videos about don't say I miss you, make plans. As in, you you stay, make a proposition for an, an activity or a plan that she will naturally want to partake of. Hey, dinner, let me take you to the beach. Let's go out of town. Th- this, that, and the other. But this business of sort of seeking validation, seeking to have your emotions suit, a lot of people find that very draining, uh, men, both men and women. Uh, and so to both men and women, I would say be proactive. Now, it such a message would resonate more easily with men because we're used to being proactive. We don't believe in free things. We know that a woman loves us because of value we bring. Women, on the other hand, seem to think they should be loved simply for being or for existing. They don't understand that they have to bring value. It's also funny because I've also seen men, especially in the boy-child brigade, saying that some women believe that the value they bring to a relationship is themselves, it's sex. And yet you're here also a boy child advocate telling us all men want is food and sex you and guys keep contradicting yourselves how are we because contradicting most ourselves? times guys are telling us that sex is not enough and you're here saying that when a guy is ignoring you offer sex yeah f- so sex, which is which se- i said food sex and silence not just sex but add sex and uh, add food and silence so and if you you've guys got the perfect love combination silence, and sex, maybe this is when I will agree with the LGBT community because they they are men there. And if the silence is what you want, then you guys date each other and be happy. <laughs> Sorted. <laughs> well, it looks like this conversation isn't going to end anytime soon. But uh, it, uh, I think it warrants further exploration. So we might revisit this issue and I might come up with a more comprehensive explanation of all, the, all of these concepts. You see, because I want to help you. Both the boy child and the girl child. I got your back. Keep listening to The Fat Boy Show on RX Radio. 